we're here today for our MBK um, campaign for youth justice, race to age, South Carolina uh, youth focus group. But today we're going to be talking about issues and matters regarding the South Carolina race to age imp implementation that recently took place in July of 2019. And our next steps and efforts of some of the things that's taking place on the ground with um, community based organization, my brother's keeping lines to South Carolina, as well as some awesome young people. So we have an awesome um, 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 gathering or collection of young people today that's going to be with us um, in this focus group setting, having some, some conversation and dialogue we're going to be sharing regarding the youth perspective and things that young people see, some of their ideas and some alternatives that we can maybe offer in regards to um, the Race to Age initiative and how we can posit positively continue to impact um, young people and how we proceed with implementation and effectiveness of programs and policies. Um, regarding the young people in the, in the system, in the juvenile justice system, as we continue to talk about reforms and things of that nature. Um, also joining us is no one other than the great Miss Tracy Tucker. Thank you, Antoine. Um, I'm Tracy Tucker, and um, I work as a consultant with the Campaign for Youth Justice right now. Um, we um, were excited uh, to work with my brother's keeper and getting a uh, Raise the Age initiative implemented um, last year. So we're very excited about that and we're excited about um, the opportunity to tell, you know, um, the folks in power that have the um, authority to make some changes in our state on um, what young people really would like to see um, as alternatives to um, the incarceration of young people in South Carolina. So I'm looking forward to hearing all the um, great ideas that young people have today and um, the opportunity to then share those with um, the folks who are running things in our state. So as we, as we, um look to make various different presentations to some of our state leaders and policymakers, um, and folks that's involved um, with the project and implementation. We are, we are grateful to have a group of rock star young people that's with us today, uh, representing the great Palmetto State, the state of South Carolina. We're glad to have young people that's a part of this conversation um, that's coming from the upstate, the Midlands and the low country. So we will allow them to introduce themselves um, and just tell them a little bit about themselves and their passion for you know, why they want to do this work and why they want to see change. So we're going to turn it over first to uh, Jalen Cohen, then we're here from Tyra Jefferson, then we're here from MJ Williams. Jalen Cohen, I'm from Spartanburg, South Carolina. I attend Spartanburg Methodist College. I'm a freshman and I do this work because I want I want the, the voice of teens to be heard in the upstate because it feels like some voices are not being heard. Or I'm Tyra Jefferson. I'm 15, and I'm from Irma, South Carolina. Um, I met Mr. Antoine a couple years ago, and he introduced me to NBK. That was actually one of the first events that I've done with catering and everything that I do. My business is Tyra's Big World of Flavor, and he's helped me grow my business as well as having me as a speaker to speak with the youth and having me join the our sisters keeper so he's been a great mentor to me and recently told me about raise the age and i've been promoting that some on my channel my youtube channel i have 4.7 thousand subscribers so i've been doing different things with my business writing books and you know still doing um my brother's keeper and different things Fifteen. I'm South Charleston, South Carolina, and um, I'm here to basically try to spread awareness, uh, not just for like big towns like Charleston, because you know it's like one of the big, bigger cities in South Carolina, but also like the little hole in the wall uh, towns around our state that don't get it enough, um, not just like credit, but like they don't get enough like notification, and not a lot of people think about them. So I wanted to spread awareness about towns like that. So every year, um, DJJ, the Department of Juvenile Justice, they put out like report on the numbers of like what young people have been arrested for, what they, you know, have been sent to um, DJJ for, what they were committed for, and that types of things. So I looked that up just a little while ago, and I'm going to just tell you what the top 10 are.
out of those 10, three of them, truancy, running away, and incorrigible, those account for 1,346 children. And so those are all issues that really should probably be dealt with in a different arena other than the Department of Juvenile Justice. And so I would like for, I just wanted to kind of give y'all that background information um, to just kind of put in, in the mix of your thoughts about how it is that we can brainstorm about different ways to, um, to, 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 to deal with young people in our state, right? That we can really address what truly is the need instead of just locking them away, um, which isn't helping anybody, right? During COVID-19, there's not a lot of stuff to do as a team, but before then, it was, it was like 75%. Like, it was events going on downtown, and we had an event going on for MBK that you come to during the summer, throughout the year. But pretty much, it's if you don't, if you're not notified, notified by somebody about it, you wouldn't know about it. So, so in your opinion, that needs to be more it needs to be more amplified and more access to getting the information out to young people and more opportunities. So we just yes, say sir. there's enough opportunity or not enough opportunities. There is opportunities, but there's not enough volume behind the opportunity for people to attend that attend the event or or conversation. Okay. In, in my community, in my area, it's not an issue of whether or not there's enough. I feel like it's um, not well distributed. Like in some areas where I'm lucky to live now, but not where I used to live. I'm lucky to live here now. But in Mount Pleasant, there's a lot more um, opportunities than there was where I used to live in North Charleston. I feel like it's not very even. Um, it's kind of like area-wise because when I used to live in North Charleston, there wasn't a whole lot of um, opportunities to keep us occupied as like kids and like off the streets and stuff. So we just go like meddling around but now they're but like coming here it kind of like changed my view on how many things were set up for us because there's so many like like i said now there's a boys and girls club and stuff but i feel like if those opportunities are more spread out around my area then i was just going to try to follow up on mj's question um answer just a little bit your response so you said now you're in mount pleasant can you talk a little bit about how it's different are there so the Boys and Girls Club, is that stuff in Mount Pleasant or and there wasn't in North Charleston? So in North Charleston, there wasn't really, like, there was stuff for us to go do, but it was all broken down and run down. It just wasn't, like, as up to par as it is over here. And we would have to make do with what we had there, which was probably, which would probably get us into more trouble than it should have. But, yeah. Um, but here, I noticed that things are, like, more uh, up to date and, up, and, like, in shape. And there's just more opportunities and more like things going on. Like there was a Boys and Girls Club in North Charleston, but there wasn't as much stuff going on for us to get involved in other things like that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I know that me or me being like a multi-sport athlete, I like to, in my off time, I like to go get more reps in the gym and stuff. So I wish that there was more gyms that, like there's a gym where I am called Crunch and they gave um, everybody that is a student athlete, they gave student passes to the gym. So that was like a great way for them to get us involved and keep us uh, like uh, like involved in, in shape for our sports and stuff like that. So I, I know for me, I like to I like to be in the gym. So that'd be a thing that I would like to do. I'd like to see more communities. For me, um, because I, I am like really big on entrepreneurship, I do wish that a lot more teams would get into that. I do see teams, you know, starting their own lip gloss line or selling lashes and stuff, but I wish that it, that would be more, you know, put out there instead of encouraging us to go work for Chick-fil-A or Taco Bell or other places. I feel I would rather entrepreneurship be more put out to us than getting a regular old job because the gen z's we want to like i said we are more independent we want to work for ourselves we want to be our own boss so i feel like if young entrepreneurship was put out there more which it is starting to i feel like we would be where we want to i mean i think that um it's it would be good because most teams they like 
fast money. They want money now, now, now. I want the money now. I don't want it later. I don't want two weeks. I don't want to get paid in a week. I want money now. So most of the time, it's like they find other things to do to get fast money. But it's it's just that most teens want money now. That's because that's how we was raised. Like the phone, the Gen Z generation was raised with technology. And technology could tell you everything you need to know now. So, and it just trans over to how how we how our hustle is. We want it now. For me, I will rebuild the system from the ground up. Rebuild the system and have events like every week, or have a place that teams can go. This, that has a basketball court that has somewhere you can sit down and talk to a mentor that has somewhere you can just go do your homework. That's like a library, a gym, and like somewhere that can feed you for free. I would have something like that with the money that they do that they do provide provide just so for the team to stay off the streets and and it would be like they could have like um internships and jobs that pay. Instead of like they making, oh, I want to go make this quick money. I need the money now. Over time, they'll get paid. Like after every shift or job they work that day, they'll get paid. And that's pretty much it. That's what I would do if I had the money. And like have different classes, like different different mentorship classes that teach you about different things like entrepreneurship, the economy, or stuff like basically to teach you the truth pretty much. I wouldn't say I would tell them I want to see the rap sheet of where you're spending the money at. Because from a team perspective, I don't see none of the money at all. All I see is it getting another prison built to put more teams in jail. That's pretty much all I see. I don't see like teams with this in jail that's getting help in jail. I don't see none of that. I don't see they don't talk about none of that in the news during in state. On the state website, none of that. And it's, this is I want to I want to see where the money is going. So, so accountability and transparency. Oh, accountability. Is what you're speaking. Okay, okay. Thanks for that. Thanks for your honesty and thanks for thanks for sharing that. I couldn't agree more with Jalen because it's that I would just I would love to see where it goes instead of just um. Like there's instead of just a new prison being built every other day, like you know what I mean. I wish I wish we could see where it's going. I wish not just see where it's going. I wish we could see it affect us as well. So based on what I'm hearing, you all are very interested in um, the transparency aspect as well as the accountability aspect and the impact to say you know what's happening besides um, facility staffing and. Um, I guess the housing of more uh, young people in the system. So, with that being said, do you all see? Would you all see the benefit of some type of youth task force, a youth council that's a part of the system, as far as accountability, as far as having a voice at the table? Would that would that be something that would be something you all would like to maybe push? Yes. I see. Um... Like he, like he said, transparency, because it's so much going on in the world right now, and especially things that we've seen a lot of during quarantine and everything that's going on. And I think we will also need, you know, to see a change in the world. Everything, you know how we're wanting to make a change. I think a change will come once we start seeing the leaders um, change. Like we have some of the same people sitting on the high pedestals or sitting um, making these decisions who, which are the main people who don't want to see a change. And the reason we're not seeing a change is because we have those same people sitting at the top when we need to have new people coming who, you know, are wanting to see a change, wanting to see new things coming, um, make those type of decisions. So I wanted to say that. But to answer your question, um, I think some things that we can do like resources a lot of young people are on social media now and i see a lot of people moving over to social media but i think word of mouth and you know trying to 
do things to get young people talking. Like, say, here's the thing, like with YouTube, a lot of people do clickbait to get people to click on their video or to get people to watch. So I'm not saying use clickbait to get young people in, but you got to pull in something to reel young people in to coming to your event or coming to see you. Like maybe say you get someone to perform there or you get someone to come, but that will bring young people in, I think, um, a lot more. Um, the programs that are available in your community, uh, which, which one of those programs would you say are best at keeping um, young people from being arrested or keeping young people on the positive track? Uh, what programs in your community would you say are, are most fitted? Whether that's programs or whether that's individuals or relationships. In my community, um, programs, uh, relationships would be uh, My Brother Keeper, um, the sale program, uh, My Sister Keeper, and that's, well, at least I know it's a group at the library, but I forgot the name of it. And that'll be the groups in my community that helps teens stay on my community, great I would have to say, of course, my brother's keeper, our sister's keeper, as well as um, the NAACP, like the youth council, that's helping with youth getting out in the community. And I would have to also say my church we, um, my church does a lot of different things. I go to Ridgewood Missionary Baptist Church. They do a lot of things to help you be involved in the church, stay involved in the church, and, you know, staying involved in the community, doing community service, doing work, go to um, nursing homes and sing um, Christmas things to them. It's just, we do a lot of different things for the community. So I think those are different programs. Different programs in my community that uh, help people uh, like around our age are one is the Boys and Girls Club of America and the other is the Mel's um, mentorship program and I think that that helps because it gives uh, young kids a uh, leader and a mentor to look up to a lot earlier in their life that they might might not have or they might not have been blessed with the chance to give or blessed with the chance to have or talk to uh, and the Boys and Girls Club in my community they host a lot of tournaments like basketball tournaments and different things just to keep kids occupied and off the streets. But okay, thanks for sharing that. I also wanted to say um, the young CEOs of tomorrow, Ms. Brown, um, I'm actually the president of that um, organization and we um, help young entrepreneurs or pe young um, people who want to become entrepreneurs or start their own business. And Ms. Brown is helping them, you know, with funding and helping them get a startup for their business. So I wanted to say that too. Teens understand teens better than anything else. Don't don't nobody understand a team more than the team. Another team talks to another team, it's like that's that's a hundred percent. But a team talk to an adult, that's a fifty percent chance that that adult gonna understand that team, and that team is gonna understand that adult. Hey, adult, I'm sorry. transportation like transportation is a big thing because a lot of teens they wouldn't be able to get to the teen center if they don't have transportation to get there and also transportation for school and say they do get a job they might need transportation to get to that job and um, also like Jalen said it all starts in the home so I think you know giving the families that may not have that much but just given the families in general i feel like every family you know well i don't know if big money families well i still think that every family should be supported financially because say not not trying to jinx anyone but say a family that has big money and something happens they will need that financial support but i feel like every family should be eligible for um government support or financial support in any way that I wish teens weren't conveyed as uh, is childish. Um, the internet has uh, forced us to grow up a lot faster than we might have wanted to or needed to. So, so because of that, I, I really hope uh, eventually that people will see that we're not as childish or 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 um, as feeble or young-minded as people as people think.
And the reason I'm so passionate about that is because from a young age, um, my mom had to uh, take me and my sister really far places to get a good education. I feel like that wouldn't have happened if there was more opportunities near us. My, pa my passion on why is because I feel like, honestly, I feel like sometimes when coming up, my voice wasn't heard and other voices weren't heard because as now, like, the system is still the same, the school system is still the same, the way of life is still the same. Sometimes, honestly, I would, sometimes I might wake up scared because you never know what's going to happen that day. And it's just that. Usually I have I just want I just want team voices to be heard because it feel like we're being left out. And it's the same unironed white male shirt that's that's still at the top. And it's like we're we're not being heard, we're being skipped over. Cause he done it done been talked about to one team. So when it goes to the other team, it's like, oh he gonna say the same thing. So let's just go back to the adults. And that's how that's pretty much how I feel. Because when I was younger, a lot of my uh, close friends that went to schools near us, because I went to a school far away, so, long, so I'd get a good uh, education as a transfer student. But I had a lot of friends in my uh, neighborhood, and unfortunately, they all, um, not all, but um, most of my good friends from back from my childhood home are like in the system now. So that's why. Wow. Right. Wow. Thanks for sharing that, man. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna keep working that to make an impact and make sure we're reaching back. And um, you definitely telling that story, man, and being a positive and you know positive part in the low country, South Carolina. So we definitely going to keep working on this. Thanks for sharing that, MJ. I think that a big stereotype in the juvenile justice system, and I think it all stems from race. I feel like a lot of people don't want to get to talking about it because some people feel that that's not a big issue, but it is a big issue because a lot of adults, um, and I've seen it, they think that young black children are just looking for trouble, you know, um, just looking to get into something, you know, being followed around in stores because they think that we're going to steal something, being um, we say something, people act like we're attacking them. So it's a huge thing that I think is a huge stereotype because all black people are looking for trouble. And I feel that there's people who are looking for trouble who are just being overlooked because they're too busy focusing on us. People who are getting away with crimes, people who are giving, getting away with the things that they've done wrong because black people are just being looked at about it, about it. And the reason I am so passionate about that is because it's just, it's been going on for too long. You know, these racial gaps and racial stereotypes, it's been going on a long, um, a, on for a long time and I feel like I don't know why I feel well I do know why I feel like this way because I feel like it's 2020 I feel like everyone is more accepting of different things and then I feel like when we take two steps forward we go right backwards when some other things happen and I think this quarantine has really opened my eyes to seeing that there's still big 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 issues in the world today and I think that's just a huge issue in the juvenile justice system.